Ethan Oliver Ralph, the man, the myth, the rage pig. Ethan Ralph has many, many foes, and if I were to list them all off, it would sound like I'm reading off the Vietnam Veterans Memorial. When you go through all the videos that I've made on the Ralph Mail, we've talked about Jim, Pippa Pipkin, the Kino Casino crew of PPP and Andy Worski, Cog, Nick Ricada, Nick Fuentes, Null, and the Sonichu Demon Theory. But there's one foe that we've never spoken about outside of a few mentions, someone who that I feel now has both the ire of Ralph and probably hates him just as much as he does her. But you read the video's title, so I'm not going to play games with you. Ralph had gone nuclear on Cozy and AF just a few weeks ago, and I'm not going to lie, it was fun to root for Ralph again, something that I haven't done in years. But like all good things in this world, it seems that it just wasn't going to last forever. But with so much going on with Ralph at all times, where can we possibly start this story? Well, considering the last time we talked about Ralph's current events was when he went full rage hog against AF and Cozy, in the aptly named Ethan Ralph Unleashed, Cozy's Destruction Explained. I think that the events of this video are tied closely enough to that one where we can call this the video's proper sequel, and you know what, I'll say it again, it was fun to see Ralph lose it on somebody that actually deserved it, and Ralph started getting W's real fast. Back on July 18th, Null, on his show Mad at the Internet, showed how Michael Alberto was banned off of Cozy for not following Nick Fuentes' orders of not talking about Ralph, and how this essentially gave Ralph free reign to talk about anyone he wanted, and they wouldn't be allowed to defend themselves. But at the start of this day, uh, the news came in from the Nick Fuentes people. The orders from the boss are clear. Do not give any attention. Do not interact. Don't even log him. Cut off all oxygen. So this is the Nick Fuentes strategy. He has decided that a complete and total shutdown of any mention of Ethan Ralph is uh, is demanded of the situation as a response. So Michael Alberto, who you may remember as being the little zoomy zoom, who was the quote unquote moderator for the Ethan Ralph Medicare debate, um, as chosen by Nick Fuentes, um, and the head of the Alberto Commission, who was to get to get to the bottom of what was happening with Ethan Ralph, uh, decided to go on Ralph's show to defend Nick Fuentes. His channel is now gone. His, he has been deleted from Cozy. And immediately after this happened, um, the admin of the Cozy went on to, uh, uh, to say that Alberto requested that his account be deleted. And Alberto has personally rebuked this and said that uh, Cozy copying Twitch's policies, you can't have banned streamers on, not even YouTube does that. Alberto says that the Cozy admins are lying. So they banned him for talking to Ralph against uh, their prayers, marching orders to not give any attention to Ethan Ralph, and then came out and lied that they didn't ban him and he requested his account be deleted because they didn't want to tell all the Cozy people that they're just banning anyone talking about Ethan Ralph. So this is what Nick Fuentes has done in response to Ethan Ralph dragging his across uh, Nick Fuentes' face. He has signed a declaration that Ethan Ralph right now is permitted to say anything he wants about anybody in America first, and they are completely and totally prohibited from addressing it, defending themselves, or talking about it in any way, shape, or form. Ethan Ralph has just been given the keys to butt anybody in America first, and if they dare say about it they're banned they're completely excommunicado from the america first cult then the next day on july 19th nick fuentes's recent stream where ralph had docks a location of was banned off of rumble for trying to incite a holy war and nick would have this to say about it on what i believe is his telegram before I read this out, I just want to remind you that Nick Fuentes has gone on record saying that it's okay to false flag and DCMA people that you don't like. However, he has an issue with it when it's done to him. After discussing with people in touch with Rumble, I have learned that the initial Fuentes rally stream on Sunday was removed by Rumble. My team and I were not aware of this as we were not notified by email of the removal and my account was in good standing, showing no policy violations as of this evening. Moreover, Rumble never told us which policy we violated. 
Tonight, we re-aired the Fuentes rally stream without knowing that, and it had been manually removed by Rumble earlier in the week, and without being told why it was removed. Rumble swiftly removed the Fuentes rally stream again tonight, once again without an explanation. Later in the evening, it was communicated to us indirectly through intermediate parties that Rumble censored the stream over a remark I made in the stream about declaring a holy war, which they considered incitement to violence. You can watch a speech on Cozy TV and judge for yourself as to whether or not you think it could reasonably be considered incitement. Within the context of the speech, it is completely unambiguous that any reference to a holy war was meant to metaphorically in reference to spiritual life and politics. I laid out precisely our political goals, which are to control immigration and appoint Christian leadership. In the call to action, I gave several concrete directives, including to pray every day, attend Mass weekly, to use discretion when discussing sensitive political topics, and to begin entering politics. I obviously do not condone or promote violence of any kind against anyone, and this was abundantly clear in the speech. Again, People can decide for themselves if the stream was censored for a legitimate infraction or because of pressure from the media matters and Elon Musk, both of whom have called for the speech to be censored. Rumble now has restricted my channel from streaming for two weeks. I have no problem playing by the rules. If Rumble considered those remarks to be in violation of their guidelines, then I will make sure nothing similar is published on my Rumble channel in the future. I appreciate that Rumble has made a real commitment to protecting free speech, and I would like to recuperate by being cooperative. I do not like that my stream was removed without a notification and without a reason given. That is the problem. It makes it difficult for me to play by the rules. I am the most controversial streamer on Rumble. Here was a hiccup. It was a stress test. How this was handled does not make me very optimistic, but I hope I'm wrong. After finding out about this, Ralph would have this to say about Nick's little oopsie. If you don't like the stream, we can't overtake a f like that. Although I'll say this. So Fuentes replayed his speech last night. And he rebroadcasted it on Rumble and on Cozy. And they took it down off Rumble. And the reason they took it down is because he called for a holy war to actually <laughs> kill Jews. I mean, I'm not getting it. Like, $3 PNC Ralph Armored Column spotted headed in the Chicago direction. <laughs> he said, this is a, a direct quote. And Elijah Schaefer was trying to defend him, but he also works for Rumble, so he has to play both sides. And Rumble said this, Rumble does not personally sanction all the ideas of the creators on its platform and may ideolo ideologically disagree with some or all of the inflammatory language of specific creators. But they clarified they did not censor but instead we're following basic legal guidelines on threats of violence. Nick literally had one line in his speech, and it says, because we're willing to die, I'm not saying this, by the way. He says, because we're willing to die in a holy war, we'll make them die in a holy war. I mean, that's a direct call for violence. I mean, I don't know what to say. Like, all the people trash and rumble are retarded. Of course Rumble can't leave that up. Like, they will take them off the Apple Store. They will take them off Google Play. Like, they get away with a lot already. They can't get away. I mean, it's an open call for a fucking race slash holy war against the Jews. And, you know, people can sit here and, and support that if they want. You know, whatever. I don't judge, quite frankly. <laughs> But that's not going to be allowed. Anonymous sent $5. Even the most dedicated Groiper has to admit it's a little odd that seemingly everyone Nick trusts the most is a former homosexual. It is weird. I wonder why that is. I wonder why that is. But the speech itself was him complaining about destiny. He talked about Aiden Ross. And then he called for a holy war on the Jews. 
And yeah, he wanted to do that. He, I think it was planned too. Somebody in chat said it was planned martyrdom. I think so too. I think he uploaded that knowing that they were going to take that down. Um, I see Shamu in chat says that Holy War comment was absolutely retarded. It's not even witty and oozes attention whore from Nick. Nick, that's what I said. I said, I was glad Rumble took down that self aggrandizing f because there's no other reason to say something like that other than to either A, make anti Zionists look retarded and crazy and violent. Or B, to self-aggrandize yourself and, oh, I'll say what nobody else will say and we'll do a holy war and we'll do this or that. There's nothing defensible at all about it. It's retardation. It's retardation from Mr. Optics. Remember about the optics? Do you remember that? That was a complete scam to take over the alt-right. This motherfucker doesn't give a fuck about optics. Are you kidding me? And then all these idiots on Twitter, and some of them are my friends, by the way, and they're like, I can't believe, I can't believe Rumble took this down, and they're not a real free speech site, and oh, what does this mean, and oh, it means that Nick Fuentes is a dumb f***ing it, is what it means. They didn't even delete his channel. They even told him if he would just take out that one line. User in amusement name sent $3 before one becomes presided. One must be able to be on consistently at the same time, Monday, two for day. I agree. But they even told him, they said, just take out that one line and then we'll let you play it. But he wanted the martyrdom, and I don't feel sorry for him at all. I think Rumble did the right thing. Do you think, do you think I'm in favor of the entire platform being endangered? All of us streamers, even people I don't like being endangered... Or Nick Fuentes getting to say his edgy dumb. Shit. Uh, no, I'm I'm not actually. <laughs> uh, let's see. Yeah, maybe I will do that. I see a little suggestion there in the chat. Uh, but no, I don't. I don't support uh, Fuentes on this. Now, if it had been something reasonable, if it had been oh, just like an anti-Zionist thing he said, or. Even, they tried to compare it to what Bannon said. Bannon didn't say, Nick's actually talking about killing people. Do you understand? And it wasn't a joke. <laughs> He's talking about killing people. While I could talk about how people like Godwinson, Dick Masterson, Big Tech, and Michael Alberto left Cozy, I think it would be better to jump right to August 18th when Ralph would start the F*** Cozy Festival, a reference to the Kino Casino's Ralph Festival. But before that, I want to say this. On August 4th, Baked Alaska would call in to declare war on America First and pump Ralph up the day after getting out of prison. When you Let's in go! Here and they're yeah, still, yeah, they're still please, wild. yeah so. please let me know because I, I can't even yeah. see the chat. I'm, I'm in a hotel in Arizona. I'm headed back to Florida tomorrow. It is on, baby! I'm coming out swinging, bitch. America First! You, you deleted my cozy channel when I was in fucking jail. That is the most petty shit I have ever seen. And guess what? I said you made a bad move by supporting Ali Alexander when it was proven he was a pedophile. I said, listen, and I charitably said, Nick, I don't think that was a good move. And you know what he did? Fuck you. You're not my friend. Cozy channel deleted. So apparently, you know, that's what happens when you call out files that are confirmed uh you know getting pics from 15 year old boys uh from a guy smiley who is my friend or still is my friend you know that's what happens to you if you and, and listen i didn't go out on nick i didn't say anything bad i said hey i don't think that was very good as an older brother but the guy can't take responsibility for anything i didn't take shots at him he fired first so you know here we are yoba season 15 god will curse the wicked Proverbs 3, 33. And you know what, Ralph? Listen, we've had our ups and downs. We've had sure. our mistakes here and there. But me and you, we've been through a lot. And, and I know you're seeking the truth. It is, I'm so happy to see you full of energy again. You've lost weight. You have this, you know, you have this aura around you. And I got the same thing. And the reason is, Ralph, is because we've been unleashed, unchained 
We are no longer in the cult. We are able to speak our fucking mind and say the truth. And I'm fucking fired up for that. And and listen, I don't hate anybody, even Nick. I hope Nick really finds God and I hope he changes his ways. But what he's doing right now is very evil. But back to the f cozy festival. On August 18th, Ralph would do a nearly 11 hour stream. And to Ralph's credit, he actually played the same music he used during the first pill stream while he had a special message for Nick Fuentes. And welcome to the Kill Stream. I am your host, Ethan Ralph, the owner and the editor in chief of the RalphRetour.com, broadcasting live to you from Merida, Mexico, the world headquarters of the Kill Stream. There can only be one Mexican leader of the white race, ladies and gentlemen, and it's me, motherfucker. Ralph then honestly told the truth, saying how the site is as dead as it physically can be, and that they didn't expect Ralph to rebuild the bridges that he had already destroyed. And you look at Cozy right now, and it's dead. This is not an overstatement. There's like 300 total people on that website. My departure, put it in the grave. Put it in the fucking grave, and there is no coming back. The coward, Nicholas Fuentes... Hasn't streamed all week. He's not streaming today. He's on the run in every way whatsoever. I swore to God on the lives of my children that I would destroy America first. And it's happening live before your fucking eyes. They thought I was done. They thought it was over. But it was just getting started. They didn't count on the Ralph Mail turning up the heat, bringing in old allies, building back the bridges that I bombed myself. They didn't count on anything because they didn't know who the f they were dealing with. Then, with help from Jesse P.S., Ralph went live on Cozy TV and had a special message for everybody that was on the website, where he almost immediately reclaimed his number one most popular streaming title on Cozy. Way to kick off this festival. People who talk to Ethan Ralph on Cozy get banned from Cozy. People who even just go on to Ethan's show and are on Cozy then get banned from Cozy. Ethan Ralph is persona non grata at Cozy. So what better way to kick off this festival than to put Ethan Ralph back on Cozy? Okay? Now, I don't know about you guys, but I think that's a good idea. Now, the interesting thing here is I could stream to, and I need to be clear about this. It's when Nick is done with the cat boys playing happy birthday, when he's out there and, you know, he's no longer drunk from all of his detective work um he's going to come back and he's going to see this so i want him to know it could happen to you nick this could be anybody's channel but we're going to start small here because the guys the pot off a cult they're completely in your system now we've got everybody so i'm just picking a random like no streamer account on cozy and let's stream through it. What do you say to that, Ethan? I'm all for it, Jesse. Okay, let's do it then. Um, we're going to start streaming, well, right now, actually. Let me just update that. And then we're going to throw your link on there. And, uh, guys, if you want to see it, this is we're just choosing a low-level random streamer right now. If you want to see this, you can go over to cozy.tv slash uh, salvo pancakes. That's the one we've chosen for right now. Cozy.tv slash Salvo Pancakes. I know that's go it's making this mirror effect, but I believe we should actually be live right now. So, Ethan, if you have a message for the people over at Cozy, let's see if we're uh, live. Let me just check, guys. Can we get a can we get verification that we're live over? We at are Cozy? live. We're live on All Cozy right. right now. Ethan, give them a message right now. F you motherfuckers! I'm back. Voldemort's walking through that door, sucker. Live on Cozy won't be long. We're already top of the table, Jesse. Do you see that? Wow. We are the number one streamers on Cozy. Isn't that interesting? Wow. Right here at the top of the show, the Cozy Festival with the mirror effect in full effect here. 
Oh, wow. I told you guys we had some surprises. Let me uh, actually kill my camera. Oh, yeah, there we go. There uh, we go. Th that'll kill the Mara effect uh, right there. Live on Cozy. Uh, we'll see how long it stays up. You know, I wanted to share the love here. You know, we're here to celebrate Queen Nicholas's birthday, uh, celebrate the death of Cozy, but I wanted to give him one more little jolt, Jesse, just for old time's sake. And when you came to me with this, I said, what better way to celebrate than to simulcast this program over on Cozy itself, where we are defeating uh, the top streamer who only had 122 viewers uh, by a good 150 viewers, 270 live watching us on Cozy right now, Jesse. Ralph W. Nick L. That's all it is. Happy birthday nick you should have given me my own cozy <laughs> streaming channel because now you know what when you don't let pot awful in i come and i kick down the door myself so we start with the low level streamers next time it's someone a little bit higher up until we finally get to nick himself and there's nothing you can do to change this by the way we've we've poured through the code we have everybody's stream url stream keys the whole deal ladies and gentlemen let's Cozy.tv. We had to inject some life. Like I said, for old time's sake, I'm looking at the chat. It's finally alive over there. Uh, you know, we're yeah. we wanted to be generous. You know, I talked about generous Josh earlier. We had to be generous ourselves. Sadly, it wasn't long before Ralph got taken down, but the damage has already been done. You were supposed to be here 15 minutes ago. What is your deal? All right, you gotta return to Cozy with us. What are you doing? All right, now let me uh, play a couple of these. Uh, these are just power chats. Oh, uh, Ethan, I, we're gonna have to kill the. Lord we're gonna have to kill that bitch. That we have a fire. No. Oh, no. Ladies and gentlemen, it happened. We are four oh, on four. Later, after a Ranbot impression walkthrough, Porcelain, the creator of the excellent merch documentary, would jump in the call as well. Uh, let me uh, stop sharing there. Porcelain, welcome to the f Cozy Festival, sir. Good evening. How are you doing? I'm doing very good. How are you doing, sir? Very good. Very good. Very excited. This me is, too. Uh, quite the event. It's been... Uh, Who have we got? We've got Salvo, uh, yes. Jesse, yep. Alberto. Yep. That's right. Hello, Hello Porcelain. How are you doing? Hi. Very cool. Now, what do you think about uh, the last month? Or, and you were critical even well before that, but what, what do you think of mm. Fuentes, Cozy, the degradation and deterioration there? Uh, it's been a fucking hellscape, hasn't it? It's been just one terrible event after another, and it's been snowballing to the point we're at now. It, I mean, it's hard not to laugh at it. I know that it's kind of getting old hat at this point to laugh at Nick and Cozy because it's just perpetual misery for them but i mean you leaving and baits and all that sort of stuff there's there's some really big uh moments there that that i think will do per permanent damage to to their movement yeah and you know it, it kind of snowballed not that there weren't people already out there uh, against them but i think um uh well you know it's just a couple more people who left and high profile they deleted bake's channel while he was in jail and just uh misstep after misstep and uh it's it's like he's lost all um strategic thinking uh, we talked about ali alexander how big of an impact do you think that that's had monumental and again we're talking about unforced errors here as well we're talking about errors that are just so plainly idiotic and and just so avoidable as well that it's uh it, it's shocking that he's been able to lead a movement for this long if you look at the Ale alexander issue in isolation and you see it you, anybody with any sense could see that nick's position would have been untenable from a optical perspective and and yet he doubled down and doubled down every single time and and it just made everything a lot worse for him he could have cleaned that up in moments in seconds and nobody would have batted a line eyelid no one would have really blamed him specifically for what ali did if he had taken some personal responsibility if he if had been a leader but time and time again we've just seen with this guy that he has absolutely no demonstrable leadership skills and he seems to have just gotten by so far by sheer luck and fortune Jaden McNeil would then call in to talk about how he was the first person to be banned off Cozy TV and talked about how many people have been banned since. Cozy Festival, how you doing, sir? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. 
Very cool. Uh, now, I just want to say, no, I'll, I'll piggyback off of that. Sure. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's fantastic. You know, a year ago, I th- I think I was the first one banned from Cozy TV. I and see. now uh, we're on, what, like 10, 12, 15 people or so. Like half the lineup on this show was, you know, <laughs> anti-me, pro-Nick. And now here we are a year later. Nick has burned every single bridge, basically, um, possible. So you love to see it. Love to see it. You do. Free, you do love to see it. And I know Jaden does. He's got like thirty minutes or so, and I appreciate you taking time here. So I'm, I'm gonna uh, focus on you for a second. Um, sure. Wh- what do you think? Um, so you go way back with with um, Fuentes. What did you think of him when you first met him? Uh, when he first brought you in, and and you know, kind of put you in a leadership position there. Uh, and how did that thinking change over time? I mean, obviously, I was a, a fan. I mean, I was big part of the the whole thing, Groiper War, all that. But, uh, you know, he went from being the, the pro-white guy, the anti-immigration guy, talking about demographics, talking about real politics, this, that, and the other. And now uh, he's, like Porcelain's talking about uh, sweeping for Ali Akbar, talking about abolishing the age of consent. Um, Spurgeon, you know, before it was optics, now he's the, the Jewish guy every single day. So, um it uh, it didn't take. I mean, I guess it it took all of us a while. You know, I was I was wrong about Patrick Casey. You gave me credit. You know, Patrick Casey was calling it out way before. Um, the Keon Casino was calling it out way before. Like a lot of the A logs, a lot of people. Um, you know, before myself, and uh, they were right. Um, it took us some time to learn, but hey, now we all can come on this stream say, F- cozy F- Nick. Much later in the stream, Ralph would play a video of him and Null talking earlier that day, and Null talked about how Ralph's actions are starving Cozy before saying where he sees Cozy in the future. It's kind of a wasteland. Yeah, well, I mean, that was, that was the big thing that happened when you left, is that um, the, tw- the continuous content on the platform, I really underestimated how much Cozy would lose by not having you streaming as much as you did, because now there's like... If you go to Cozy and you're you're one guy, it's not only you don't have much of an option in terms of what juice that you want to see because there's only a couple of people. Thank you. Especially after you left, a lot of other people also followed suit. Um, So it's basically starved. And in in regards to that, the um, the Cozy thing is is as a whole is a little bit of a waste because he has this neat thing going for him. And in this era of deplatforming, where people are trying to do you know alt tech and stuff. He he decides to just like leave it as is, not pursue it, not develop it, not not license it out, not try to actually build like a real foundation for him to to build, you know, positive conduct uh, you know conductive business with other people in in the sphere. He just has this thing, and he's happy with it because he gets to use it, and that's it. He doesn't really have any further ambitions with it. Well, and I remember, you know, I was on Cozy for a while, and I remember when I first came there, I was like, this is pretty promising, right? Uh, pretty smooth site and uh, works pretty well, right? Uh, and it's it's closed, uh, which is a detriment in a certain way, but also, you know, it, it, it means that it's usually steady, right? Because there's not a ton of people on there sucking up all the bandwidth, et cetera. But it's kind of just stayed in that state the whole entire time, right? Like he's never added super chats. He never, you know, like really changed the the makeup of the site uh, in any way. And it's, uh, you know, it's just kind of like he rested on his on his laurels there. Um, and I, I don't really see that uh, going anywhere. And, and to be tr- truthful, I didn't. I know it would have an impact leaving, but it really um, just completely decimated that site. I guess I didn't realize <laughs> how, how much work I was putting in there, um, but uh, it, it really did, you know, especially during the day, but even at night, like there's been a permanent, now he still gets his viewers, it, you know, I don't know if that number's legit, um, but it, it it did take a, a lot away from the site. Where, where do you see Cozy going? I know it's the cozy festival so i should uh address that a little bit uh where do you see it going from here i i don't know you know how much uh he really wants to put into this uh oh, in terms of money. the platform yeah. itself is because you have rumble now and it's obsolete yep rumble is what cozy could have been if he was uh competent i think that too and you know even before i left it was it was no accident that i was restreaming on rumble uh <laughs> Uh, and that I started trying to, you know, build up uh, a little bit over there because it was clear where the ball was bouncing. Uh, and, you know, Cozy, 
it's it's shocking to me, and I guess I just didn't want to see it, Josh. Um, but a lot of people uh, came back to my show and said that I I just wouldn't watch you over there. Uh, first off, some of them didn't like me, um, you know, supporting Fuentes and you know being his attack dog or whatever. But a lot of people were, you know, maybe even more, just said I don't want to go to Cozy, uh, and I, I just wouldn't watch stuff over there. And then when you see these other platforms breaking out, specifically Rumble, which I, I, is my favorite one, but kick and and other options um it, it's just really not viable long term i don't think and now you even had beardson people like that trying to trying to dalton uh trying to stream on rumble and you know they wouldn't be doing that if they didn't see some things as well yeah no i agree um it, it's it's an alienating like he has he has negative uh benefit to the people around him at this point now and, uh, this is a platform yeah, and I, I just don't see um I, I don't see it lasting really. Um now let's wrap up the Fuentes part with this with this point. Today is his birthday, August the eighteenth. He turns twenty five years old uh today. Now, how much of his rise and you talked about it a little bit earlier is like, that why you picked today yeah it is <laughs> <laughs> i didn't know that <laughs> yeah it is uh yeah that was an old ralph move there yeah i, I picked today for a reason sadly i feel like most of the stream afterwards had nothing to do with cozy but since i had to listen to corinne the ancient woman so will you yeah this is <laughs> this is uh this is corinne corinne can you hear us yeah, I can hear you. The internet is dangerous. The internet has ruined my life. What did it do? You did a good job on your own, to be honest, Corinne. No, I got thrown over, all over Thought Hub or some crazy thought something. Why did the you internet know? has ruined my life. That's I do crazy. really hard news. I'm based in Washington, D.C., and I do really hard news. I was, just had a huge news story come to me. I just had a oh, confidential yeah. informant call me on the phone, a whistleblower. We're in, yes. America's in trouble. I hope you know that the only reason I stopped that was because I couldn't listen to her any longer. I was getting ready to cut it there, but with less than an hour left, we get something that's going to be important for later. Very cool, and I love my wife too, but she's probably not watching. Uh, she's definitely watching. Tell her how much you love her. I do love I her. I want to get you guys back together. Okay, this is probably Ethan, not I want to get you guys back together. Well, this is probably not the place for that. But Tell uh, her you haven't cheated on her in Mexico. I haven't. I haven't. And you want her back, and you miss your baby so much. You were so happy. Adam, were you there? Did you see how happy he was? Remember how happy he was? I wasn't there, but I watched the show. What, you weren't oh. in Ralph the Mania? I want to flirt with Adam. Yeah. Adam's hot. Will you get my number from him, Ethan? I'll give you my uh, number. Pass along. 917. I'm, I'm, and I want to flirt with Adam. He's hot. He's married. I'm married. Thank you, though. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> and somehow, those were really the only parts of that stream related to Ralph being anti-cozy in the almost 11-hour stream. This anti-cozy stream somehow had nearly nothing to do with it in the grand scheme of things. And Ralph, I doubt you'll ever hear this, but the Fuck Ralph Festival was a million times better. Now, if that was the end of this video, I would be incredibly disappointed in myself. But thankfully, that was really just the backstory for the main event, updates on the horse divorce. Now, like I said, this is essentially the sequel to Ethan Ralph Unleashed Cozy's Destruction, so thankfully, I'm not going to have to talk about the divorce in its entirety. But to make it short, Ralph got married back in January 2023 and split up before May with his wife, Amanda. Now, with Ralph, Amanda, and Rosie being such a happy family, you really gotta ask yourself, why would she leave Mexico and Ralph? Get that inappropriate, and I don't give a f what you're approving or not. Clean that up. Oh. Stop, stop. I a million you dollars? You think you're going to talk to me like this? You're not. Do you understand? Do you understand? Do you understand? You won't talk to me like this. I understand. Do you understand? I understand. Go ahead. You're what? Getting a towel. You're what? Getting a towel to clean up your desk. You're getting what? You, I'm not going 
going to hurt you. But I'm telling you, you won't talk to me like this. Do you understand? I understand. Please Do you understand? Please don't put your hands on me again. I understand you. I'm going to put my hands on you. And you're not going to stop me. I'm not going to stop me. And if you try to stop me, I'll kill you. Do you understand? Yes, I understand. But that audio, which came out on September 5th, by the way, wasn't uploaded by Amanda, but instead it was uploaded by Harry Morris, aka Amanda's father. Previously, Harry Morris had exposed how Ralph left his dog Tug to die in Mexico while Ralph vacationed in Cuba, and leaked out texts between Ralph and Amanda's sister. But this was largely focused on my Ethan Ralph hiding in Mexico video, so I'm not going to go over it here and move directly onto the meltdown. On August 24th, Jaden McNeil, after watching the Kino Casino, would end up laying the Kino crew on to talk about some recent events. Yeah, call in. Call in. Yo. Yo, what up? Yo, what up? So, I want to point out, Ralph told us about oh, the fuck. third board member, that he wasn't a groiper, he Come wasn't on, a member of the Aussie squad. He said he knew his identity, but we should trust him. That's what he said. So why did he lie? It's kind of nuts. Yeah, well, you know, he's lying he's now. He's lying fucking now because everything's been exposed. <laughs> when we asked questions to Lulz, which, by the way, we didn't even want him on the show. We were fucking tired and drunk. He came on. He fucked it all up. And then what fucking happened? Then Ralph went on a rampage trying to fucking discredit us. A-logs were bashing us. Everyone, And then it turned out it was all fucking true. It was all fucking true but now he's like actually i didn't know motherfucker said this yesterday yeah yesterday the fucking uh on the um on the interview on on his show he goes yeah i know who the third member is so you knew it was a griper you knew it was a furry f he knew it the whole time oh yeah but we're wrong no no, no we're no, completely no. Get wrong the broomstick and i just don't have any patience for ralph like this is crazy dude after all the bullshit you put everybody through who was anti-AF, doxings, swattings, you go after their families, flag down Jaden's fucking channel with the MCAs, flag down our channel with the MCAs. Then we finally go, okay, fine. You know, I go after AF, fine. But then he lies to protect groipers. Fuck you, Ralph. And he doxes one of our donors on the day off. Are you fucking kidding me? You Ralph fucking... goes, they dox Bibble! Where's Bibble's dox, Where? Ralph? Where? Where is it, bitch? I said I have private Ralph, stories you about him, you fucking kidding me? You fucking lied, I mean, you piece of shit! I haven't Fuck. seen- I haven't seen that, dox. I haven't seen the that. Just, what I said was, I have embarrassing stories from behind the scenes when I worked with him on Subcultured. I don't know his name, I don't even know if he's black Let or not. Let me ask you that. look, do you guys want to just sell this right now or no? I'll just because well, chats Spurgeon. Do we just do it? Not, I'm not fucking giving Ralph anything. He we tried. We, we tried. You don't have, we no, tried I'm not. I'm not saying. Times. I'm not saying to give him anything. I'm saying. Do you want to argue it right now? Or no. okay. No, oh. he could die in a fire. He's a liar. liar. Everything He's he says a is a liar. lying sack of shit. Nothing to fucking offer. He is a fucking scumbag. He's a piece of shit. He lied about it. If you want to talk to him, that's your prerogative. But all this guy can do is lie, 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 lie. He lied about the fucking board member. He lied about Nick taking a cut, didn't take a cut. The story keeps changing. And why I is he so I desperate mean, the story to speak is it up? changing. Someone needs to fucking it answer for this. Every fucking day. We've tried talking to them about a bunch of times. People are going, oh, you're scared. No, no, no. He's bl he blocks us whenever he's... And then he unblocks us and goes, why am I blocked? And then we try to talking to him. And he has us muted. He lowers our volume. He yells to over. Honest, he I lies. Have interest in talking he to could die in a fire. Like Ethan Ralph. Then Ralph was summoned Beetlejuice style. And I got some IBS Apocalypse stream flashbacks. I'm going to try to... I'm going to try to... Well, we all know how this is going to go. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> <sighs> all right. Okay. So, why did you lie? 
You big fat son of a bitch. How you doing, Ashton? Why did you lie about it? Why did you fucking lie about power chat, Ralph? Why did you lie about it? You're a fucking liar, Ralph. No, shut the fuck up. Pedophile. Why did you talk to Sophie when she was 12 years old? Why did you talk to Sophie when she was 12 years old? You can't Alexander, you Alexander, you fucking Alexander, you fucking 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 you 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 to no surprise, Ralph couldn't keep Jim's name out of his mouth before rage pigging. Oh, what so you for? Yeah, hey, Warsky, okay. what about the revenge porn you posted? What about you? Do you guys, do you guys want to go? Do you guys, want to, you guys want, to want to go to a server where I can actually even, moderate this, even, or do you guys just want to keep Even Medicare called you out on it. No, no. Even Jim Medicare called you out on it, Andy. Use the lies. Use the lies. No, it's down true. No, it's down true. And the archives where Medicare called your ass out. You know you posted that to the three feeser heads in chat. There's no moderating. There's no moderating. All this fucking dirt, and both you motherfuckers need to be put down. Period. This was largely just a bunch of screaming, but I had to put this in after hearing it. Get up out of your chair, fat ass. You can't Ralph, even you get up out of your chair. No, I did not. Ralph, you did. I can we pull up the sex tape? Can we pull up the sex tape <laughs> now so. and watch you eat the sh? I don't think up. I don't think I can pull that. Pull up, up the sex tape. <laughs> yeah, pull it up. Let's see him eat the shit. Watch me, the shit. Watch me get my work on. Yeah, pull why don't you show it on the kill stream? Show it on the kill stream tomorrow. Yeah, pull it up. Show it on the kill stream. Show the sex tape. I've already seen it. I lived it. I don't have to see it again. You lived eating the shit. I didn't eat any. You're eating right now live on air. You sniffed your thumb. You're eating shit and ate the shit. I thought it was sniffing. Come on, Ralph. Nobody ate any. Ralph, you're eating you a lot of shit on air it? tonight. Ralph, First we heard said the he sniff. wanted to come on, by the way. Are you Trout down to talk puked? to him? No, you down to I'm talk not to down Persif? to talk to fucking Of course you're not. Why? Why not? Of course not. Why would I give him any attention? Well, he's Why ready to come on right now. Why would I give him any right validation? I, I so if Gator's ready to come time, on, we're going to bring Gator on? Bring him on. <laughs> bring everyone on. Bring him on, fat ass. Bring Bait on. I built a little bit different one. Bring them all Ralph, on. Let's go. Ralph, let's go. Back IBS to Apocalypse 2 right fucking now. Bring let's them all back on. To now, the rest of this call was very entertaining, but not worth putting in the video, so unfortunately, we're going to skip it. A few days later, on August 27th, things would ramp up with Ralph saying that Amanda was no longer responding to his messages and that he was going to stop paying his child support. Uh, I decided to, to email my estranged wife, who has not talked to me, since July 5th, uh, she hasn't sent me anything about my daughter. She hasn't talked about scheduling any visits. Uh, pretty much cut me off completely, although I do see her reading my messages. Um, so the idea that I owe any child support on an agreement that doesn't even exist when she's not telling me anything about my child, probably at the behest of her father, to be honest with you, um, is nonsense. Uh, I won't pay a single dime uh, if I'm not involved in my daughter's life. Uh, and the fact that uh, either one of them, I don't know about her, but he certainly does, uh, thinks that I owe child support when my child has basically been stolen from me um, is ridiculous. And either one of them can see me in court if they feel any differently uh, because I won't pay for a child um, that I've been cut out of their life. Like, that's just not going to happen. Uh, I really don't care what anybody else thinks about it. Um, it's just not going to happen. Ralph would then talk about Amanda's view on Lollicon. As anybody can see. And even the other night, when I went head-to-head -head with Worski and PPP, uh, I defended her past lollicon advocacy 
which by the way, I had to pull teeth to even get her to denounce that in public. If you want to know another truth, I literally had to, you know, I won't say beg, but pressure uh, her to put out that denunciation because she didn't think it meant anything. Well, that means a lot of things to a lot of people because a lot of people think you're a file if you're supporting Lollicon and you have that on your record. And I realized she was with the real sick fuck and promoting whatever he was promoting. Uh, but those are the facts of the matter. You don't have me on record supporting Lollicon ever. Ever, 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 ever. But you do her, and you do have Harry Morris sitting in Cog's chat talking about uh, it's funny when Cog calls her a file. There's no low the guy won't sink to, basically. And, you know, it's a tough situation because even now I still love my wife. Um, but that seems like a fool's errand to be quite honest with you. That seems, that seems very foolish uh, of me uh, to have held on to that, uh, especially after what was done last night. Later that day, Mr. Morris would post a message that he had received from Ralph on Telegram. See you in court, fat fuck. One day, my daughter will ask questions about where her father is. One part of me hopes you're not around by then, but the other part of me really hopes you are. Ralph did not like this one bit and then started drunk tweeting. Shout out to GNN for showing this. The ass isn't that fat, lady. And I've had more than my fill of it anyway, winky face. Sorry that I saved you from a life full of in a childless existence, I guess that's what I get for doing charity work in the first place. And your dear old dad threw you under the bus at every turn. I hope everyone is happy with the decisions they made. You two degenerates deserve each other. Having to defend your lollicon degeneracy at every turn? You didn't deserve my spin. Anyone who liked that for any reason is sick in their head. Ralph then posted a picture of a cartoon horse on his Twitter. This might sound a little odd to the average listener, but the joke is that Amanda looks like a horse. Finally, Ralph would leave a very special message to Mr. Morris. Harry on Huss mouth. I suggest he stays that way. For his own family's sake, you ain't seen nothing yet. Then, on August 29th, Ralph would go on panel with the Thorpe family on a stream that was most likely renamed later called... Ethan Ralph gets felted for a second time by Grayson panel. Hashtag brutal. Uh oh. <laughs> Ethan! Ethan, what's up? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. How's it going? <laughs> <laughs> but I know what an incredible amount of you are asking. Who are these people? Well, their names are Ben and Grace Thorpe. Before I go any further, I want to say that Grace was absolutely set up for failure in life. While Grace, growing up, was supposed to have been homeschooled by her mother while her father worked a job as a teacher, her mother Courtney instead would do nothing to look after Grace and her five siblings or any house chores. This left Grace from the age of seven years old to have to look after their entire family. Courtney would abuse the children physically and told Grace that she hoped she would self-sunset at the age of 16. Courtney at some point also abandoned the family, saying that she didn't want to be their mother anymore so that way she could start another family and left the kids to live in absolute squalor with moldy dishes and rats everywhere. There are clips of Grace confronting her mother about all this and more, but I don't believe that would be appropriate to show on this video. Needless to say, Grace hates her mother, but her father is no better. I want you to name me one other father that talks about their children like this. Go say, hey, if you want a real woman over here, come on over here. How about that? Why don't you lose your little ass, Grace, and use your little sexual appeal that you claim to have. No, Let's that's what I'm talking baby. about. All right. Fucking princess, get lost. Go shake your ass out on the streets of Vegas of the internet. That's right. I bring put back some boys. Highway. I'd sell Grace's ass on Boulder Highway. Yeah. Right, Get out there on Boulder uh, Highway. He's not even, back not even, money. she hasn't even worked up to the strip yet. Now, this has absolutely nothing to do with the Thorpes or Ralph, but you see this idiot right here? Meet Hormaxer. 
Now, while I could probably make a standalone video on this idiot, I'm gonna show you guys where I first heard about him and how he broke his arms doing chest flies. Shout out to the Undead Chronic and Ribby the Party Frog. And he just sets uh -oh. the weight to the max. He hits the set. Dude snapped his humerus. He snapped the <laughs> bone between his elbow and shoulder doing oh. fucking chest fly. Okay, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> What a fucking pussy! <laughs> Dude, I, the, the, oh, what to a be, fucking pussy! Dude, to be a fly on that wall, he was like, literally. I would pay so, because every gym has cameras. I would pay so much money. <laughs> it is, ah, it's just, but back to Ben. As a teacher, let's hear how he treated children that were under his care. Warning, this is absolutely disgusting, and not from an icky sense, but a right and wrong sense. When I, I used to take care of kids, and I used to like grab their hand, and I would I could hold them on timeout, but I would squeeze their knuckles together to cause them immense pain um, <laughs> while hold, like holding their hand, and they would squirm and cry. And, but it looked yeah. like they were just throwing a fit, but I was actually causing them pain uh -huh. in their knuckles. Um, yeah. I, I think that that I, and I stand by that. Like that was because I don't leave any marks, but like I'm skirting the law, right? Because like technically I should have been fired for that. Now let's see how Ben talks to his son who doesn't put him on a pedestal like Grace does. Okay, you do die of starvation. I hope you die of starvation and I hope yeah. you are. Thrown well, out of nice. that apartment. That's I do. Nice. Yep. Good, thank you. What did I'll I do go to the landlord apartment? right now. What did I do in this apartment? What you've did, done I, did I call for something? I don't know what I did. What did I do? That you was have five idiot. cats in that apartment. Oh, I can't tell my landlord that, and I'll tell the, my landlord that you're living downstairs like a fucking weirdo smoking I, his fucking apartment away. That's not even an apartment. It's a commercial space, buddy. You don't live down here. I'll be living yeah, up there. Yeah, you do, buddy. Yeah, well, you live down here right now, and you're smoking away. You want to go? You want to go? No, I don't want to go, John. You have been unbelievably irresponsible up there, John. How? What have I done? I don't know I'm why you... I'm going to come up there and beat the fucking shit out of you. I'm going to beat the fucking shit out of you. Oh, my God. I'm going to beat your fucking knee. So you'll need another surgery. Cool guy. Cool guy. You're a cool I guy, will. Yes, I will. I will. I think the alpha. Twice. You're the alpha. I, you know Shut what? Your mouth. Die that way. Now, after all we've seen from Ben, he also has the nerve to call himself Abel. And I'm sure some of you are wondering, who is Abel? Well, in chapter 4 of the book of Genesis, we get the story of the two brothers. Cain, the older brother, would farm vegetables, and Abel, the younger brother, would herd sheep. When the two brothers offered a sacrifice to God, Cain's offering was rejected as it is widely speculated that it was offcuts that he didn't want, whereas Abel's offering was that of his flock and was accepted. Angry with his brother, Cain would commit the first act of murder, killing Abel in a fit of jealousy in his fields before God cursed his crops to no longer grow. So Ben, calling himself Abel, gets a little questionable now, doesn't it? So, why don't we go back to the beginning, where Grace first met Ralph. On June 24th, Grace would go onto the kill stream and dance for Ralph in what I'm pretty sure was supposed to be a dance-off. However, since Ralph is in the worst shape of his life, the dancing didn't go long. And then, out of nowhere, a regular Ralph love story started to bloom. When the user, Lalo647, said that she was going to be Baby Mama 3, Grace pinned the comment. Fast forward to July 21st, and Ralph announced that himself and Grace would be going on to Yoba House, a baked Alaska streaming house. Um, so, yeah, I'm committed to doing uh, Yoba House, too. I don't know for how long, maybe. Uh, maybe I'll go for uh, a oh week Oh, my gosh, we and you should go together. Yeah, we should. Are you down? Yeah, that would be so fun. All right, I'll get you in. I'll get you in there for sure. Because uh, Lulz is already talking about setting it up. Uh, so, he's... Lulz runs powerchat.live slash the Ralph retort where you can donate for the dance off later on July 26th Ben talked about how Ralph wanted to fly Grace to Vegas and Mexico with him you know and uh, you know my friend Dick Masterson I don't know if you right. know him or not but um I, but anyway. I saw I saw recently something with him 
Yeah, I and you also there. offered to fly yeah. her out to Vegas, fly her out to Mexico, right? Okay, and but like, okay, maybe that she's not mature enough to handle that. But uh, but like for content, opportunity. By the way, for content. Yeah. By the way, not. No, for... I know. I don't say you. that. I don't say that. And get me in trouble. <laughs> we talked about I doing the. Trust you. We I talked about doing the Yoba. Hand. We talked about doing the Yoba House too for content. By the way, yeah. there's already a bunch right. of rumors uh, about that. Please don't flam the flames on that. I'll just beg you but right now. Ben even gave Ralph his blessing to marry Grace. Could I could conceive of her falling in love with you I just, because you're a great guy. Well, I you're a guy who has her. a fucking pair. And I'd be, I consider an honor for you to be my son in law. Well, I. Whatever. I appreciate She's you saying that. It's up to her. It's up that's, to her. That's very kind. But I, I just want to be clear because I, I know there's a lot of rumors out there. I don't know who's the worst father between Ralph and Ben, if we're being honest here, but here we are. Circling back to the Fuck Cozy Festival, and we would get a duet from Ralph and Grace. Now, I can't play this due to copyright, unfortunately, but I can show their first I Love You. I forgot I can't. My phone I, I do. I do. I have to go, too. No, that's fine. That's fine. Why don't you tell <laughs> people where I to I love find you. you. Oh, well, thank um, you. Well, on August 23rd, Grace would do a public breakup with Ralph because Ralph was mad that Grace said she would rather sleep with Nick Fuentes than Ethan Ralph. Uh, Ethan, you overdid it with the groper stuff. <laughs> you overdid it. You doxed people. Men don't do that. You went personal. Men don't do that. You went too far. And like you're, oh, you're even if that wasn't the problem, you're overdoing it now. It's it's too much. You look obsessed. Like Nick looks better than you. <laughs> Sorry. Nick Fuentes looks better than you after this. I don't even like Nick Fuentes! He called me a whore! <sighs> Would you rather sleep with Ralph or Nick? Like, neither. But if I had to, obviously Nick. And now, I think we've gone full circle, back to the August 29th panel where Ralph called into the Thorps. Ralph explained to Grace how they weren't equals in the proper Ralph a male way. Yeah, see, this was kind of the issue is like that you're like helping me. I mean, we're just we're just co-creators, you know what I mean? Like, it doesn't happen. No, you're not a co-creator. I'm a legend and host of the Kill Stream for years. You're True. Uh, known for f your dad. That's what you're known. Ouch, for. Grace. Damn. What do you have to say to that? Well, you're here on this stream with 98 viewers, and I'm not on your streams, am I? So. Uh, well, yeah, because you're not coming back on my stream, so. Yowch. Well, I didn't want to after the Fuck Cozy Festival. And guess what? Our old friend, Jim Medeker, would even send out a super chat before Ralph started seething. Ten dollars. Uh, well, I know where Thank he lives. Thank you, Mr. Medeker. Question for the panelists on the stream. Show of hands, how many of you have eaten poop on video? Uh... Ethan, where are your arms? No, I didn't. Okay, okay. I think he meant thumb, not hand. And by thumb. the way, Mr. Medicare, you know, it, it's <laughs> funny <laughs> that he's in here. He's on the desk door. Uh, so I'll have to forgive him. I'll just have to forgive him. But um, I don't know. For all I know, his wife is running his account now. So Well, at least he know, still has really a wife. Don't. Thoughts? After that, we had both Big Tech and Zoom come in, but the rest of that stream was a disaster. And in like two and a half hours, there was not a single clip worth putting in this video. So, needless to say, it looks like Baby Mama 3 had been cancelled, and that left Ralph with a horse to chase after. But there was one person that was seemingly gatekeeping Amanda from Ralph. That person was Mr. Harry Morris, and Ralph would have this to say about him on Twitter. Harry on hush mouth, I suggest he stays that way for his own family's sake. You ain't seen nothing yet. A man who has nothing to lose is a dangerous man indeed. Of course, Ethan Ralph had to say something about his wife as well. Having to defend your lollycon degeneracy at every turn. You didn't deserve my spin. Anyone who liked that for every reason is sick in the head. 
The next day, Mr. Morris would post this. Note, I have never heard him speak before, so I'm just going to read it normally. What to make of a person, not a man obviously, who chokes his pregnant baby mama and in front of his future baby mama short-term wife, then claims moral superiority over and mocks a fellow streamer that lost his kids for choking their mama. What do you think of perhaps some other take an Uber to dialysis ma reject who makes multiple videos and DMs stating that his future father-in-law will never again see his daughter or granddaughter, one for which he could barely stop streaming in time to be at the week delayed birth, then cries he's being kept from his kids by two evil families, and then immediately goes on a crusade to save another young woman who dared reject his public advances by claiming he's worked tirelessly for months with her mom to gather evidence to separate her dad from his kids. What about some third disabled brother abandoning social outcast mental midget who publicly claims he's working on mending his relationship with ma estranged wife who had to flee to a foreign country with an infant in tow to get away from addiction and abuse to a safe house where he knows not her address and only a vague description of her employment only to seal the deal forever with an ongoing intimidation campaign that includes mass unwarranted calls at all hours, plus the cherry on top, he demonstrates the ability to continue his control of her by terrifyingly calling all related employers in the area until he can pinpoint her location. Many such examples, by the way, and the pills and the booze are not the primary cause, nor is any claimed temporary absence. The fix and such a person or people in the example cited can drop to zero pounds, in ash form preferably, and still be the same a-hole, burn in hay to Sandra, you ho. Harry then followed this tweet with another. Thanks, and I wanted to clean my palate before a fun day trip with some others y'all might know. It's simple, say whatever you want about anyone on here, just don't attack the rest of a person's family, be it sisters, mothers, whatever, who have no online presence without expecting to be hit twice as hard. Don't talk about hiring local folk to harass us or sending an actual attack dog because I'm not Russian and all you are doing is going to be part of a future filing. Follow those simple rules and live whatever life you want and I go back to monitoring. Blame me all you want, but we all recollect that it was weeks after the escape finally occurred, after several prior attempts, and plans by the way, that we even started speaking to each other again. She alone calls the shots, including any actions she may take someday, and does not need to use my wallet, although I will gladly those costs when they come up. God bless every day I get with Rosie when he wasted nearly every one. Her second birthday will not be held in a bar and no pics will be posted. Of course, Hogboy Ethan Ralph couldn't let that slight against him go unwarranted, and so he posted this. Keep in mind that I had to beg Amanda Morris to disavow her support of Lollycon. She had claimed to already have stopped consuming it, and I took her at her word. But you can be the judge of that. I don't think many others would believe it, but I loved her at the time. I hoped it was true. I messaged her for two months trying to hear about my daughter, who she abducted and took across an international border. I said nothing incendiary. Did not try to locate her or any other ridiculous claims being made by her impotent father. I won't be returned to the United States, ever. So come and get me, bitches. My residency renews for three years next month, and then it goes permanent after. Like I said, come and fucking take me. And unless Amanda apologizes for leaking my emails to her psycho father, they weren't bad anyways, I just lost my wallet and needed help then I have no desire to speak to her again as long as I live. I'm taking the JLP advice. I don't have any children until they turn 18 years old and reach out themselves. Well, later on the kill stream that day, Ralph, while talking about Grace, started talking about his poetry. She said I sent her poetry, by the way, today. I sent her a poem that I wrote for my wife because... She's a female, and I was just like, well, what do you think? Do you think this sounds okay? Like, I was trying to get my wife back, honestly. Like, I don't have to hide. I didn't write this a poem. I would have gave her an eight ball of Coke if I wanted to fuck her. It didn't have anything to do with her. Uh, it was like, I don't know, does this poem sound okay? I didn't write this any poetry. 
It was a poem that I wrote for my wife, and I may even read it on air. It's terrible, but, you know, I'm not a poet. <laughs> As you're probably well aware, Ralph did read out that poetry, and by the grace of God, Daddy Jim returned to YouTube and read it out for us. Of course, this is going to be shortened for time. What has Ralph been up to? Well, he went into a bit of a spiral. Had a little a bit of a, a domestic with his family. His wife left him, took the kid. This is the second time <laughs> this has happened. Went on a zanny spree. A long, long-lasting, six-month-long, seven-month-long zanny spree of Modellos and zannies. Finally culminating in Nick Fuentes saying, I don't want your drunk ass showing up at one of my events and embarrassing me. And that's when the, the war started. And what war are we talking about? Well... Of course, it's the Ethan Ralph versus Nick Fuentes war that we all knew was going to happen. We knew eventually it had to happen. But, you know, he got this, you can kind of see him here. He's a little spooked. I like to call this Zanny fever. This is the, the ghost of Modelo's are haunting him. He doesn't really, he's looking around. He's checking his, the perimeter. Let's, let's one more time. Oh, where are this? Oh, I heard something. What is that? Is that the police? Does Modellos are talking to me? I don't know what's going on. It's a little spooked. A little spooked. I'd be a little spooked too if I was advocating creating a, a, a group of, well, advocating that people essentially engage in probably one of the most illegal acts they could uh, that will get you beaten to death in prison. Our boy Ethan and his slam poetry. Now, I don't know what could compel a man to ever actually read this out loud, as embarrassing as this is, but apparently he did. It's not too long. It's just a minute and 40 seconds over on uh, uh, Kino Shea's, uh well, I was going to say Knitter account, his Twitter account, if you want to watch it later on, pulled from one of his streams he did recently. It's a little bit of slam poetry, a little sad poetry. I want you to get your mindset mentally prepared for this, chat. Remember back when you were like 12 and you had a crush on somebody, but they didn't like you back? So you got really sad. And you had all these things you wanted to say, but of course you had common sense, so you never wrote them down and gave them to that person. Well, Ralph decided, here's a good idea. I'm going to read this in front of an audience that likes to f*** with me. I'm going to read my sad uh, preteen poetry out to the audience. Now, I'm not sure. Is this Ode to Piggy? I'm not sure what the name of the f***ing poem is. But we're going to listen to some of it. So prepare yourself. Put yourself in that mindset. Heartbroken 12-year-old. I'll make sure I've got the audio ready to go for desktop. There we go. Let's listen to this. This is the master of the written word. If you remember back to when Ralph and I first had our falling out, he wrote uh, some really hard-hitting articles, smoke in the fire or some about me that we read on stream. So this is coming from that literary genius. Here we go. I mean, again, I don't know the name of the poem, but he's going to read it for us. He's just preparing himself. I know I'm not showing the video. You just need the words. They touch the heart. I know it's ironic. <laughs> they touch the heart. This is the poem I wrote to my wife about a month ago. This is the... Okay. Hopefully the audio is coming in clear for you. This is the poem he wrote to his wife about a month ago. I said, I don't know what to do or what to say. I think about you every second of the day. If I should die before I wake, I pray to God your life be great. Woo! Oh, God. I've got some tears in my eyes here, guys. Oh, you know, nearly dying didn't make me cry like a bitch, but this is some heart-rending stuff. Roses are red. Violets are blue. I love you, bitch. I don't want to divorce you. The ground is flat. The sky is high. I don't got nothing to rhyme with that. I'm just so sad. Is that about the level we're at here, Ralph? We must be separate for a while, but all I want is you to smile. Our love was great and grand and rough, but I know it made you tough. <laughs> this is, this is fucking awful. I never want to let you go. Life has told me I have to, though. I really, really don't want to listen. The ring you wear, I hope, still glistens. No, you know what? We're going to rewrite some of this. Let's go back. 
I never want to let you go. Life has told me I have to, though. I really, really don't want to listen. I like the way you look when my piss makes you glisten. Is that is that romantic? Did that that rhymed right? That was illiterate enough for a horse. The ring you wear, I hope, still glistens. And if and if it already has been shed, I hope you'll remember when I'm dead. That Nick Fuentes is a fat. That I really, really loved you so. I just didn't always know how to show. And, Bish. Uh, that was the poem that I wrote there. No wonder she left you on read. Dude, I want to put you on read. What the f***? What was that? That was like a handicapped preteen. That's not even a fully functional child wrote that, Ralph. What the f*** am I listening to? That's, that's like, that's, you make Hallmark writers seem like literary giants with that sh I could buy a card for a dollar that's better at what you're attempting to do. Ralph, what is this? I, I, we need to, we need to really analyze this a little more. This is the poem I wrote to my wife. <laughs> could you imagine, like, you... You, you're like his wife, and you've fled the country when he wasn't around, and taking your child with you. And this just pops in your inbox. About a month ago. <laughs> He's like, no, baby, I'm off the drugs and the drink, and this pops in your inbox. I said, I don't know what to do or what to say. I eat shit every day. I think about you every second of the day. If I should die before I wake, I pray to God your life be great. Bish! <laughs> he needs to add more bishes in there. Ralph then started drunk tweeting at Jim again, just like old times. Let me call in. He sounds really sick, by the way. Scared. Sad. This bitch I literally scared to let me in, lol. Big bad Jim no more. And just like a man banging on the window screaming in a movie, Ralph's pleas went unheard. But Mr. Morris got interested in poetry himself and posted this. Roses are red, violets are blue. She's moved on, and now you should too. Off the rails again with the latest message you sent. No, we shan't help you try to pay your effing rent. Now a public threat that she won't see. Her Twitter deleted and her mind set free. On to your many other battles you go. And by the way, your mom's was a special lady. Ralph would respond with his regular demeanor and didn't even bother trying to rhyme. I asked her for a phone number, not any money. That's you that bribes her to do your bidding. You're really inspiring me to file the necessary docs in New York to see my daughter, by the way. You'd think you'd keep your f***ing mouth shut you really wanted me gone. But then again, you're not that bright. Oh, and in a now-deleted tweet, Ralph said, Surrender now or face the full force. Your decision, Amanda. After that, Ralph then uploaded some sappy and cringy love letter that Amanda had sent him. And well, I could read that out. I think it would make Ralph angrier if I didn't. my it goes After announcing that he paid his rent on time, Ralph wished his deceased mother, Sandra, a happy birthday. Happy birthday, Mama. I miss you more than you could ever imagine. Well, being the father-in-law that he is, when Harry Morris saw that, he thought he would do the same thing too. Happy B-Day, baby. I'll always have this proof of your skills. But child raising was not one of them. Ralph at this point had finally had enough. Mr. Morris was shitposting him into psychosis and he needed a win and fast. Ralph's first instinct was to say that she had gotten with a Mexican man, but that only caused people to call him a cuck. No, Ralph needed a W, and he needed it fast. He had warned Amanda to surrender now or face the full force, and instead, they memed Ralph into oblivion. Ralph needed to drop the hammer, and he needed to do it now.
On September 2nd, Ralph uploaded some unclothed pictures of his wife to the cow board. This was just hours after saying that he told her if her father didn't stop what he was doing, they were going to regret it. Oh, and how can I forget? Before that, Ralph also got kicked off of Kick for showing his own pee-pee. Even Jim would chime in on this on post. Come back and stream for a handful of hours after being gone for eight months. Read some guy's awful poetry. Within days, he is melting down nonstop, telling stories of how his then-wife loved getting barebacked while he watched like a cuck. He tries to sell pictures of tiny penises to pay his rent, starts dropping revenge porn for the second time. Fast forward to September 5th, and Mr. Morris posted texts between Ralph and Amanda saying that he took both her and Rosie's passports. Okay, fine, let's go. I'll also tomb Rosie's passport. You won't be leaving her with her. <gasps> took. Ethan, I am trying hard to figure out. Mr. Morris then dropped something even bigger and released the secretly recorded abuse video that we showed earlier. Let's play some of it again, just in case you forgot. No sex, no I mean, you're really kind of a worthless wife, to be honest with you. What do you have to say about it, though? Nothing. I think sure. Mr. Morris then tweeted out this. The following authenticated video was smuggled across the border at great personal risk and despite all efforts to prevent it. Guys, if this situation resembles you, then I urge strongly that you summon the courage, if only for a few seconds, to remove yourself from society, let's say. Women, if he... repeatedly yells obscenities at you and especially within earshot of your child, repeatedly demeans and degrades you such as making you clean up his spilled urination bottles, demands unreasonable obedience as if you were enslaved, puts his hands around your neck, ever, threatens to murder you, ever, then you and your child should get away from him at all costs as soon as possible. If he has isolated you from family and friends, you can seek help from the National Domestic Abuse Hotline at 1-800-799-7233 or the equivalent in your country. Please don't ever think you can change a monster, and somehow you must rise above the fear of retribution no matter what threats, actions, and lies may come. I want you to guess how Ralph responded to this. Did he put that journalism degree to use? Or did he go full A-hog? I haven't watched and won't, but a woman allegedly recording a man during one of the worst moments of his life and then releasing it in order to frame the public conversation is one of the oldest tricks in the book. Even Jim couldn't help but talk about this again on post. What a week for an obese pill-popping alcoholic felon sells pics of tiny dicks to make rent, leaks nudes, admits to being a cuck, video leaks of him threatening violence demanding his pee pee bottles get cleaned up, info leaks that he hits the bed, hid passports to keep his family from fleeing the moment he turned around. Lol, goddamn. And surprisingly, Ralph did the unthinkable and publicly surrendered after trying to make this sound like an Amber Heard and Johnny Depp incident. I've been doing a lot of thinking about things, kinda hard not to. I've decided to forgive my wife and even her father for their transgressions against me. I apologize to them for my comments as well, even though I never expected that to really be accepted. I simply fell off due to repeated trolling from him, rubbing the fact that I can't see my daughter in my face, etc. My wife seemed to encourage it and gave me no response, even though I tried to reach out nearly every day. I should have been stronger in the face of that, but unfortunately, I was not. The end goal of relapse was thus obtained by those who wanted to see it. I apologize to those supporters who I let down with my fall. I've decided to take Jesse Lee Peterson talk advice and just move on from them. And from my daughter, she will hopefully reach out to me when she's older. These things happen. It happened with my first wife and her father, actually. It's definitely a huge loss. And a hole will always be there for me. But Jesse Lee Peterson really is right. The thoughts tormenting me daily are just destroying me. It's foolish to fight them or hold out any hope for something that is long gone. Living with this hate and obsession is slowly killing me, so I'm giving it up. 
Believe it or not, I still love my wife and I wish her the best. It wasn't all bad, even if it is rotten now. A lot of it was really great, actually. Of course, that wasn't it for Ralph. It seemingly almost never is. Ralph had the idea to post this on Twitter, something that would show everyone that it was Amanda that was in the wrong, by showing that it's illegal to record someone in Mexico without their consent. I've moved on because it's not healthy, but someone did post this out to me and I couldn't help but share it. And you know what? That's it. I'm done. Ralph is irredeemable and everyone in this story outside of Jim, Harry, Rosie, PPP, Andy Worski, both Chronic and Ribby for their brief appearances, and debatably, Grace is a terrible person that I wouldn't trust with my children or leave them alone in my place for 20 minutes unsupervised. Make no mistake, this is a story about terrible things happening to terrible people. And you know what? I stand by my statement that there are no lessons to be learned here. Ralph and everyone that enters his orbit ended up being a trash fire slash that Simpsons monkey fight meme that people can't help but watch. So I'm going to cut the video here. But wait, what's this? Ah, trading cards. From their humble origins of keeping packs of cigarettes safe from bending too much to their boring evolution of showing baseball players and eventually going full circle back to their ancient roots, finding their proper place for gaming. As a 90s kid with an irrational fear of the number 30, having my own trading card has always been a fun idea that I've always had, and now, thanks to Lolcow the Trading Card Game, you can get your hands on the first piece of Audena merch in the Volume 1 Booster Pack. And even if you don't get my card, Volume 1 has cards based off Base Shaman, Kiwi Tapes, Biff the Werewolf, Liquid Chris, and of course, the most important one, Mr. Jim Medeker. I know that all of us have a huge overlap of viewers, so I'm sure that you're going to pull something you like. So if you're interested in pulling an Audentum card, or even the mythical one Sonichu medallion, hit up my link down below.